How's it going YouTube? We've got something a little bit different today. I've got a, a pre-release product to have a look at and it looks quite interesting. So we're gonna have a look at it and then fit it to the van and see what it does. A few years ago, Mercedes released a new technology called Night View Assist. It's basically an infrared camera on the front of the car that penetrated out into the darkness and gave like a night view vision and it had a little display on the dash then it would use some clever software technology to highlight people and other dangers in the road this could be used for example if you're getting dazzled in the dark and you can't see somebody walk out in front of a car in front of you because you're getting slightly dazzled still uh, this would pre-warn you of any situations like that uh, in any difficult to see situations we've moved on a few years since then we've got a company called InfraiRay that's wanting to do something pretty similar to that. Uh, this company, they specialize in thermal cameras and night vision. Uh, from what I've seen, mainly for the hunting scene, uh, so they're pretty well known and pretty good at it. They do branch out into other areas and do normal thermal cameras and IR cameras and things like that. What they thought they'd have a go at is something pretty similar to that thing on the Mercedes using thermal technology and infrared cameras. And mixing that along with AI intelligence so we can determine what we're looking at. And what they've come up with is this. This particular product is a really early product, still in development, but we're going to have a look at it. I've not got loads of information on it, but I've got enough so we can get by, have a look at it. And what we'll do is we'll stick it on the van and then we'll drive around and have a look at it. I'll wait till the night and we'll have a drive around again and have a look at it. And I think it could be pretty interesting because these literally, these warn you of any dangers. Particularly if you're driving down, say, a wooded area, uh, there's no lights anywhere, literally just your headlights. And if there's a deer or something that's hid in the woods, ready to run out on you, the thermal cameras on this thing would pick it up and show you well in advance. So it's an extra added safety feature for your car. Uh, it could have a few different uses as well. So as well as a safety feature, you could use this for, say, hunting or whatever. If you're out in your 4x4, uh, out in the middle of the woods, looking for whatever you're looking for. For me, this is a good safety feature uh, for if any animals or any children or anybody else runs out into the road when it's dark, you can't really see them at night, but this will highlight them well before we get to them. And using the AI technology, it, it points them out. So let's get down on the bench and let's have a look at this thing, shall we? Right, here we have it. Here's the Infire uh, NV2. As you can see, this is a very early product. Uh, this particular version's still got all the Chinese writing on it. Let's grab my translator. There you are, there you can see Car AI Night Vision System NV2. This is how it comes in this particular box. I don't know whether the final version will change from this, but this is the box that I've got it in. So I think what we need to do is we need to open this up and let's have a look at it and see what you get in the box and then we'll talk about the specs and what this thing can do. First thing you notice, is the unit itself. So what I'll do is I'll take this out of the way for a minute. Let's have a look at everything else in the box like we usually do. And then we'll go back to the unit and we'll talk about the specs. First thing I see underneath is we've got a little sticker. This is a little mounting sticker. Uh, so we can mount it to your dashboard. Opening up the top, uh, we've got a little warranty card there. And we've got another box just inside here. If we open this one up, one thing we have got missing is here. This has got the instructions missing. Uh, this is because obviously we're a pre-production model and the instructions have not been made yet for this unit. I have got a PDF version that I can have a look at uh, on the screen behind us. So let's pull out this stuff one at a time and see what we get in it, shall we? Pass through power supply, a normal 12 volt uh, socket with the double uh, USB pass through on the back. This supplies power to the unit itself. We've got an IP67 fully waterproof thermal image camera. This has to sit on the outside of the vehicle because obviously when we're using thermal imaging, the temperatures the thermal camera picking up are what it's reflecting off. So you cannot go through a windscreen because then it will be taking the temperature of the windscreen and not the things on the other side of the windscreen. So this particular part of the system has to be on the outside of the vehicle. Uh, to go with that, we've got some ultra fast coax cable which will go between this camera and the unit itself. A little bag with mounting screws and a bracket, etc., for this camera. And I was also given separately a little mounting plate which can go above your registration plate to mount the camera in itself. Uh, so as you can see, that pops into the back and the camera would stick out there. And that would be above your front number plate or, or something like that. We'll have a look where to mount this when we go to fit it to the vehicle. 
And apart from these little mounting stickers that we've got, uh, this is exactly what you get in the box. So let's have a look at the main unit itself. Right, so the main unit itself comes like this. It nicely packs away. This can sit on your dashboard in that sort of orientation. And then when you need it, you've got this little tag where you can pull up the screen and enable yourself to be able to see it. Uh, all the intelligence and all the computing is all done in here. On the bottom, we've got a plug there for the thermal imager and also a plug for your power. On the back of the unit, you can see a micro SD card. I'm told that this will store video uh, from the system itself. I had a quick look at it and what I could see on it was like a, a compressed file and it uncompresses into, into photos. So I don't know whether that will change or not later or there'll be some sort of application or something you can use with it. But for now, what I found was a compressed files in it and you could uncompress them to be photos taken at various intervals. On the front of the unit, we've got a speaker unit there. Just down there is a little light sensor so it can dim the display uh, when we go into night. On the top, you've got your 258 by 192 resolution screen, uh, which is plenty good enough for this size screen. And as we said, it's got the little tag on the back of it so you can pull it up and down. Uh, when it's pushed down in that position, it goes into a power standby mode. Uh, when you pull it up, it switches it on. Uh, we've got a volume up and down because this warns you when you are close to hazards and an on off button there as well. If you press the plus and the minus at the same time for a few seconds, it turns on a heater function. What the heater is, is because this is a thermal camera and this lives outside, it turns on a little heater inside this uh, thermal camera to make sure this view is nice and clean and it's not fogged up or frozen. This whole system has a 200 meter range uh, so it can see quite a way in front of you and uses artificial intelligence to determine what's in front of you and pre-warns you of any dangers with a 0.2 second response time on those warnings. So I think that's about it for all we can talk about this system. So what we need to do now is we need to take this thing outside. I'm gonna fit it into the Volkswagen Transporter, but I'm gonna fit it in permanently as well. So we'll have a look at a proper install on this and see if we can find a decent place to put this camera on the front so it's a permanent install. And then we'll take it for a drive and see what it's like. And then we'll do it again tonight when it's dark. Actually, before I go, I've got one more thing that I bought off of Amazon to make this a permanent install. Let's have a, open it up and see what we've got. Uh, what I bought was some of these little sockets here. So what my plan is, is I can use this wire, hardwire this socket in behind the dashboard somewhere. I can plug that in and just leave that plugged in so we've always got power to the unit and I'll put this behind the dashboard somewhere where you can't see it and it'll be wired up to ignition live. Uh, what I need to do is put a bit of tape around that just to make sure it doesn't vibrate out. So that's how we're going to get power to the unit so it can look a bit more OEM and a bit more wired in properly. So literally all we'll see is this bit coming out of the dashboard plugged into the back of the unit. So let's go out and fit it. Right, so what I've done is I've just placed it in there now. I've put the camera there, look. I've just fitted it in there and I've just ran the wire out into the vehicle, just mainly so I can make sure that it's got a good view and it's seeing everything it's supposed to be seeing. Uh, what we're supposed to use is this, and we're supposed to fit it down there above the registration plate, but because I've got this bar on the front, it's not really got a clear view, so I've had to find somewhere else for it. Uh, I think the best place for me is just tucked under there in that grill. Uh, you won't be able to see it, it's right out of the way and it's got a nice view. I also ran out this coax cable to see how long it was just to make sure you'd have plenty of length. It literally pulls out to about here so you've got plenty of length to get around any size dashboard. Now look at inside, I've just plugged it in now into this. Uh, we're going to wire it in properly like I said before. Uh, what I'll do in the grill is we've got this little bracket that came with it so I'll use this and I'll, I'll fasten it to the grill somehow. We'll have a look at that in a little bit. Uh, but I powered it up from this and then I've sat it just on the dashboard there. Uh, so when it's down, it's tucked away. You can't really see it. It's not really taking up any room or anything. I could have put it this side, uh, but I've decided to put it that side because it's a bit more tucked away and it's a bit more central. So if I pull up the screen, uh, as you can see there, it can see the MR2. Uh, there's no heat signature on the MR2, but the AI has picked it up as a vehicle. So what we need to do is install it properly in this position where it is now, uh, get rid of all these wires, and then we'll have a look how it works. So what I need to do, is I need to take the inside of that out, uh, pull this up, and then I can get a wire all the way down there. And then under the front of the vehicle, what it'll do is it'll come out behind there, behind the battery, 
I can bring it round here through the grill to the camera. So that's my job now. Get this camera wire rooted in properly and then we'll do the power. Right, that's that stripped out. Uh, this top bit just clips off. As you can see there, I've already got some wires wired in for these USB points here. They're already on an ignition live. So what I'll do is I'll tap into this uh, to fit this socket and I'll just cram that down there out the way when I've done. Uh, but I can get the wire through now. I can get it across the dashboard here. You can't really see it, but right back in that corner down there, there's a hole and that goes through to behind the battery down there. So now I can get the cable through. Right, so what I need to do around the front is this little black bit here, I need to get this off, uh, which is this screw here. And if I remember correctly, I think there's one behind here as well. There was one there. I've not put that back from before. So I'm going to get this one out and then I can pull this metal bit and then I'll be able to see behind the battery there to where that wire comes through. So I'm going to pull that wire in, get it out here, uh, get it so it's coming out here at the side of the battery. And then what we'll do is we'll take this grill off and then fix the camera to that. Right, let's have a look where we are now. I've got this cable coming out the front there so now that can tuck behind the grill here and go to this camera come in the vehicle uh, I've got the excess there coiled up and taped up so I can cram it behind there out the way and then I've got it all coming out here and I've brought it out where this little USB thing is here so I've got the two plugs I've got the power and the camera that can go there into the back of the unit uh, for the power I've literally, I've piggybacked onto the back of this USB here. I've wired up the 12 volt socket into it. Uh, and this 12 volt socket there, I've plugged it in and I've just taped it in so it doesn't fall out. And then taped up the excess cable. So what I'm going to do is that hole there, I'm going to cram it all behind there, behind the radio. And that's where it's going to live. So let me get this back together. Um, I'll get that cover on outside. I'll take the grill off and then we'll have a look at mounting the camera. Right, that's the inside all back together. Uh, as you can see, I've mounted that there. Um, I've just brought the wires round the back and put them through there where the USB socket is. As you can see, uh, we've got no signal because we're not plugged into the camera yet. Uh, but from my seating position, uh, this is what I can see. So I think that's probably for me in a good position there. Uh, right, next job, get this front grill off so I can mount this in properly because obviously that'll fall out eventually there. Um, I've just got these clips here to take off and then it, it clips out from the bottom. Right, after trying a few different ways with that bracket, um, I decided just to use some of this Gorilla Glue here. And I, it's like an epoxy, so I've, I've just glued it into position there. Uh, I could have made a 3D printed bracket or something like that, but to be honest, that'll be perfectly fine. It's not going anywhere. And if I do ever need to take it off, I can just cut it off with a knife, it'll be fine. I've threaded the cable from the dash all the way through here, and it's just coming out there, so I can plug that in, and then tuck away any slack behind there, then that's done. Right, that's all back in. You can see that's a nice tidy install. The camera's just down there. So let's have a look inside. If I put the ignition on, we can literally just pull it up by this tag when we want to use it. And when it's down, as you can see, it turns off. As you can see there, it's looking straight ahead. It's already picked up the MR2. If I set this up on a tripod and walk in front of it, we can have a quick look. If I walk outside the van now, you should see me walk in front of it and it should pick me up as a person. There we are, I'm walking in front of the van now. Hopefully that's picked me up. I'll see you in a minute when I have a look at it. And if I get too close, it gives an audible warning. Uh, you won't be able to hear it because the microphone's on me. Uh, you'll get an audible warning inside to say that there's a hazard. And this does pick up to a 200 meter range in front. So what we'll do is we'll find out in a minute. We'll go for a drive and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, we'll do it first in the daytime. And then later on when it's dark, we'll go out for another drive. We'll find somewhere really dark and see how it picks up people and other things. Right, I'm going for a daytime run. Uh, straight away, this is a quite a good example. I've got the sun in my eyes and we can see on the screen, we've got everybody highlighted. I have actually done this once already with the GoPro, but for some reason the GoPro couldn't really focus properly on the screen and it was looking past down the road. So I thought I'll do it again with the proper camera. Uh, hopefully it's not wobbling around too much because it is quite heavy on this stand. Uh, as you can see, everything's color on black and white so it's it's really contrasty it really stands out and from a good distance away we can see the hazards uh, you can see as they're far away they start off green and then get yellow as they're closer and then red as they get really close there's a little audible warning there you are you just heard it there because that's because of the people on the left you can see the little people symbol uh, what you find 
is when you're going really, really slowly, it doesn't do it. It seems to be linked to your speed, uh, but you can see it's picking everything up really well. Obviously in the daytime, it's, it's not so much needed. Uh, one thing I did notice when we was going around in the GoPro earlier, that when you're in traffic like we are now, the traffic starts to move off. Uh, there's a little audible thing that tells you that the traffic's moving away. So if, if you're not paying total attention to it, uh, it'll bring your attention back to the road again, and we'll know when the traffic's moving. Car ahead moving. Car ahead moving. Going past a quite busy area now. You can distinguish really well between the people and the cars. Actually surprisingly good weather for December. A nice sunny day today. Right, so I've got a Costa. Um, I'm going to sit and drink this a second. That's how it works in the day, but the real test is at night. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till it gets dark, and then we're going to see how it works in the night. Right, here we are. Night test. Let's give it a go in the dark. So there we are. It's pitch black. Uh, what I've tried to do is I've tried to pull the camera up a little bit so you can see what I'm looking at. If I turn my lights on, you'll see what I can see there. Right, let's go for a drive and see what it's like. Uh, now it's dark, it's warning me of things a bit more. I don't know if you can hear the warnings properly because obviously this mic is a bit sound cancelling. Obviously it's not pitch black for me because I've got my lights on and I can kind of see, but I can't see nowhere near as good as what that can see on the screen. Those people on the left are a bit hard to make out. It's definitely seeing people before I can see them. Somebody running across the road there, look. Bit more of a built up area. See that man there on his own? And it warned me that he was there because it looked like I was heading straight for him at the time. Hazard. Just warned me of some people on the side of the road. Car ahead moving. It just told me there the car ahead was moving, just in case I weren't paying attention to the traffic. Right, let's go out of town a little bit and see if we can find a darker road. Right, we're just about to head onto a truly dark road. Uh, this is the last of the street lights now. So as you can see, that can see the road well ahead in front of me. There's a car coming towards us, so let's see how quick it picks that up in a minute. There it is. And as you can see, it can see well down the road. Obviously, there's no people here, so it's not picking up any people. Right, here we are, parked up for a second, uh, just under the Sheerness Bridge. You can see it just going over there. Uh, right, I've got the lights on now. If I just switch the lights off to the van, that's absolutely pitch black in front of me. I'm just going to walk out and see how well it picks me up down at the end. Uh, you'll be able to hear me because I've got my wireless mic. So I'm walking back, zigzagging in front of the van. Hopefully that's picking me up quite nice. So that's how it works in pitch black, or pitch black as we can get. It's a small screen, but actually I could quite easily drive in the pitch black with this, looking at that screen. I'm not gonna try it, obviously, because I like my license. One thing it is good at with the oncoming headlights like we've got now is because I'm getting dazzled by the headlights, I can't see perfectly the pedestrians at the side of the road. And it does give me the little gonging sound, and it warns me of them. So it sees them well before I do. Right, back from my drive, that was quite an interesting little thing, actually, that. And what I'll do is I'll put some links down below uh, where you will be able to buy this thing. It's not out yet. Um, it'll be on the X Infrared website, and I'll, I'll put a link to their Amazon storefront as well. Um, check out those guys and see what else they've got as well because they do they specialize in a lot of the hunting stuff like I've said but like I said this unit I found really interesting um, it's got a few different uses obviously the safety features and hunting or whatever you want to do with it but overall the technical capabilities of it I found interesting and very good actually check the links below like the video if you liked it comment below or what uses alternative to safety you could think of a good use for these uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more stuff like this and the car stereos and everything else and I'll catch you guys again in another video Cheers.